well, it looks like I screwed up my custom loop, but technically it wasn't my fault. Either way, today we gotta fix it. Stay tuned. Do you like saving money? Of course you do. You need to check out today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals has a free browser extension available to make saving money online even easier. When you're on a website, just click on the browser extension and it shows you all the deals available for that website. This browser extension will automatically search through all of the most up-to-date coupon codes to find you the best savings based on what you currently have in your cart. Check out this deal I found on Foster & Grant glasses. I love these glasses, but end up breaking a pair at least once a year. Maybe I should buy two. So, follow the link in the description below and get the free Slick Deals browser extension and start saving money today. Unless you don't like saving money. I seriously need to take my own advice. Okay, in full disclosure, I didn't really screw up. I kind of did it on purpose. At least I knew what I was doing when I screwed up and I figured I'd be making this video at some point. When I originally water cooled this system, I did it with the Corsair Hydro X water cooling kit. The goal was to only use what came with the kit to water cool the system. Unfortunately, the kit did not come with a drain valve. Corsair, this is seriously something you should add to this kit. A drain valve is extremely important. Either way, I absolutely love the Corsair's water cooling components and I've been really happy with the Hydro X kit. However, we have some changes coming soon to the loop and to make it easier, we really need to have a drain valve in the system. So, I figured I'd show you a few tips on getting this done if you forgot to install one when you built your own system. For the drain valve, I plan on using EK's Quantum Torque drain valve. If you haven't seen this thing yet, it's actually an amazing little drain valve. It's extremely compact and it matches the rest of EK's Quantum Torque fittings. The way this drain valve works is you simply take the cap off of the valve and pull on the fitting. It's as simple as that. And you can't accidentally open this fitting when it's assembled because the cap will actually block the mechanism so it won't open. So let's shut the system down and see if we can get it drained. Okay, now that we have our system here on the bench, there's a few things that you're gonna need to be able to do this. The first one and the most important one is gonna be one of these fill bottles. The next thing that you're gonna need is just a container that you can actually hold fluid in because unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to fit all the fluid that you need inside of this bottle. So you're gonna need something that you can offload the fluid into. So I would just get any kind of bottle that you can hold the fluid into. The next thing that you'll need obviously is a drain valve that you're gonna install in the system. You can use any drain valve you want. However, I highly recommend this little EK drain valve. These things are amazing. And then finally, get yourself a nice rag or something that you can use just to clean up any spills. Now, obviously, you really don't wanna spill any fluid at this point, but if you do, it's nice to have something you can use to clean it up with. And hopefully, whatever spills that we get will be on the surfaces and not on the computer itself. A really important rule that you need to follow when opening up a water cooling loop is to be methodical. Make every movement count and just go slow and double check everything multiple times because you really don't wanna make a mistake. You do not wanna screw around when you open up a water cooling loop. So with all that said, the first thing that we're gonna do now is open up our fill valve. I'm using the little tool that came with the Corsair kit, but depending on your fill valve, you know how to open it. So go ahead and just pull the fill valve out of the computer and then we can move on to the next step. So once you get the cap removed, I want you to take your fill bottle and just crush it down as tight as you can possibly crush it down. Get as much air out of it as you possibly can and then take this fill bottle and stick it into the fill valve so it gets into the fluid and then let go. And then what this will do is it will create a suction and it will actually suck the fluid out of the system. Now, this is gonna take some time. As you can see, this is going really slow. So just take your time, get as much of the fluid out of the reservoir as you possibly can, and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, one squeeze off of this bottle, got about half of my reservoir empty, but depending on the size of your reservoir, it may take you a little bit longer. So when you take this out, just make sure you don't drip anything onto the system once you take the fill bottle out. Now, as you can see, 
The fill bottle is about half full at this point. However, if you actually try to squeeze the bottle now, you're just gonna squirt fluid out. So this is the next thing I want you to do. Actually take the cap off of the fill bottle, just like this, and this is another good reason to have a towel laying around so you don't get fluid all over the place. And now go ahead and squeeze the fill bottle with the cap off of it. Make sure you don't squeeze it enough to where the fluid comes out of the bottle, but once you do that, then go ahead and stick this back on. And while you're screwing this on, be really careful not to squeeze the bottle any more than you already are because you're gonna actually make fluid leak all over the place like I'm doing right now. So once you've done this, then go ahead and take this and just be really careful not to get any fluid on anything that isn't supposed to have fluid on it. Stick this back into the fill port. Make sure it's submerged in the liquid and let go. And once you do that, it will start sucking some more fluid out. And now at some point, you're probably gonna get to the point where you're gonna have to push this tube into the bottle so it doesn't get air. You wanna make sure to keep it submerged the entire time so you can get as much fluid out as possible. And like before, this is a really slow process, so just take your time. This is the reason why we wanna add a drain valve to begin with, because could you imagine draining an entire system like this? Yeah, no, it wouldn't be fun. All right, we got the reservoir almost all the way empty, so I think this is gonna be enough for our use now, so go ahead and take the fill bottle out. Make sure you don't drip any fluid on anywhere and go ahead and set that to the side. And any fluid that you spilled anywhere, make sure to clean it up so you kind of keep your workspace clear. Now, at this point, what we've done is we've emptied the reservoir almost all the way to the bottom. And our goal is, is to make an air bubble because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this entire system and flip it upside down so that air bubble will be right at the lowest point of the water cooling loop so we can add our drain valve to it. But before you do that, make absolutely sure that you put your fill cap back on. You don't wanna flip this system over and not have the fill cap on it. That's an extremely important tip, so make sure you don't forget it. And make sure you tighten it as well because this is gonna have pressure on it and you don't want it to leak. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and get this system flipped onto its lid so we can get the drain valve installed. Okay, so now that we have the system sitting on its lid, you can see here that we have an air bubble that we created right here into the reservoir. Now this is gonna be the lowest point of the loop in my system. On your system, depending on what you have at the lowest point, you wanna make sure whatever fluid that you have has been replaced with the air bubble. So if you need to, you may need to move the system around a little bit just to get the fluid to move around. But once you have that done, then go ahead and take your tool, go ahead and remove the cap that's plugging the port that you wanna put the fill valve into. And then be really cautious at this point, you don't want anything to spill out. So just in case, go ahead and put a rag in place and then slowly take the cap off. And as you can see, I got a little bit of drips out of it, but luckily they all fell into the towel and nothing got into the system itself. And there we go, it's looking good so far. So now we need to put the actual drain valve in. So for that, we're gonna screw that in place of the cap. Make sure it's in there securely. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and just make sure that the drain valve itself functions properly. And it looks good. So from this point, I'm gonna put the cap on and then I'm gonna flip the system back over again so we can replace our fluid. All right, as you can see, we our air bubble has kind of shifted now. We definitely have a lot of air in our tube, so we're gonna have to bleed the system out. And unfortunately, you're gonna have some bubbles for a little while. However, depending on what you wanna do at this point is you can go ahead and drain the system now if you'd like, or you can just top the system back off. I'm gonna take the fluid I took out of it and put it right back into the system. And to do that, you essentially just use your fill bottle for its actual purpose. Go ahead and line it up with your fill port, Squeeze the bottle and fill your fluid back up. Now that the system's hooked up and everything's running good, I got no leaks, so we're good to go. One thing I recommend doing is if you're using a variable speed pump, then go ahead and run your BIOS prior to booting into Windows and just set your pump to max just to kind of get the fluid pumped through the system. The very first time you fire it up, at least on my system, it kind of vapor locks and the bubbles won't get out of it unless I turn the pump on full blast. But with that said, it's definitely possible to install a drain valve on an existing loop. However, it's much easier to do this when you're building the loop to begin with. 
Performing maintenance on a water cooling loop is already a really difficult and stressful time. So I wouldn't add to that stress by not having a drain valve in your system. Don't do what I did, install a drain valve. You'll thank me for it. If you'd like to watch the video where I install this HyperX kit in this system, then go ahead and click on this video here. It's a really nice kit, I highly recommend it. However, if you order one, make sure you order a drain valve. Have a great day.